Good evening and welcome to the Carnegie Town Hall. The regular meeting of the City Planning Commission will be called to order and we will begin with a few introductory remarks. The City of Sioux Falls Planning Commission serves as an advisory board to the City Council. It is the responsibility of the Planning Commission to consider and make recommendation on land use and zoning matters. Conditional use permits and minor amendment requests will have final action here this evening unless appealed to the City Council in writing within five days. Any decision made on preliminary subdivision plans or future land use amendment requests tonight will be referred to the City Council for final action at the third council meeting of the month. Any decision made on rezoning requests, major amendments, or ordinance amendments tonight will be referred to the City Council for final action at the first council meeting of the month. Council meetings are held at 7 p.m. here in the Carnegie Town Hall and are televised. Any action taken here tonight on a final development plan is final. The Planning Commission will first approve the consent agenda and then the regular agenda. In order to place certain non-controversial items on the Commission's consent agenda, planning staff and the Planning Commission applies the following criteria. First, the request conforms with the City 2015 Land Use Plan. Second, the planning staff recommends approval of the request. And third, there are no audience members present or written comments received in opposition to the request. And fourth, the application meets all conditions and requirements of the ordinance. Once the consent agenda items are approved, you are free to leave. For the regular agenda, the following normal public hearing procedure will be followed. By first requesting planning staff to present a brief report on each item. Second, the petitioner will be requested to come forward and make a statement or answer questions. After the petitioner, anyone from the audience who wishes to address a particular agenda item shall be recognized. Then, the Planning Commission will discuss the matter further and take appropriate action. We ask that anyone addressing the Planning Commission other than staff move to the podium microphone, identify themselves, and state their address for the record. Please limit your comments to less than five minutes. As a courtesy to everyone here tonight, we ask you please either turn off or silence your cell phone or pager. This meeting is being televised on Channel 16 and will be rebroadcast Saturday at 10 a.m., Tuesday at 7 p.m., and Wednesday at 1 a.m. Thank you for your cooperation. Good evening and welcome to the T Carnegie Town Hall. I call to order this regular meeting of the City Planning Commission and will begin with a few introductory remarks. The City of Sioux Falls Planning Commission serves as an advisory board to the City Council. It is the responsibility of the Planning Commission to consider and make recommendations on land use and zoning matters. Any final action on conditional use permit requests taken here tonight are final unless appealed to the City Council. Any final action taken here tonight on a preliminary subdivision plan will be referred to the City Council for the public hearing on March 17, 2008 at 7 p.m. Any final action on zoning, rezoning requests, major amendments, or ordinance amendments taken here tonight will be referred to the City Council for their public hearing on Monday, April 7th at 7 p.m. Council meetings are held here in Carnegie Town Hall and these public hearings are televised. Any action taken here tonight on a final development plan or a minor amendment for a planned development district is final. At this time, the Planning Commission will approve the consent agenda and the regular agenda. In order to place certain non-controversial items on the Commission's consent agenda, planning staff and the Planning Commission apply it the following criteria. First, the request conforms with the City's 2015 land use plan. Second, planning staff recommends approval of the request. Third, there are no audience members present or written comments received in opposition to the request. And fourth, the application meets all conditions and requirements of the ordinance. The consent agenda items are, item number one is the approval of the February 6, 2008 minutes of the regular meeting. Item number two are plats. Item number three, is uh, item 2008-01-14, a rezone from O Office District to C2 General Commercial District to allow a motel expansion at 101 North Blaine Avenue. 
Item number four, 2008 11 is a rezone from unzoned to RS2 residential district to allow expansion of the high school campus at south southern boundary of the Lincoln High School campus. Item number five, 2008 15 is a rezone from RS2 residential district to I1 light industrial and RC recreational conservation district for development of land uses allowed in the light industrial district at 600 South Valley View Road. Item number six, 2008-02-01 is a special use permit in subarea A, Raven Industries Plan Development District to allow on-sale alcohol as an accessory use to a restaurant at 196 East 6th Street, Suite 101B. Item 7, 2008-02-03 is a conditional use permit in C4 Plan Commercial District for development of a site greater than one acre in size on Ellis Road north of 40, 41st Street. Item number 8, 2008-02-16 is a conditional use permit in I-1 Light Industrial District to construct a telecommunications tower for public safety communications at 2700 North Drive. Number nine is 2008-02-04, a final development plan in subarea A, Interstate Crossings Business Park Plan Development District to construct a <laughs> private college building at South Broadband Avenue, south of West 57th Street. Item 10, 2008 02 is a final development plan in subarea A, Tuscany Village Plan Development District to construct duplex and multifamily residential units at 6500 East Santa Rosa Place. Item 11, 2008 01 16 is a final development plan in subarea D, Meadows on the River PD. Plan Development District to construct a commercial building with apartments <coughs> at South Louise Avenue at West Shirley Avenue. Item number 12, 2008-02-19 is a final development plan in subareas A and C of Vera McKinnon Plan Development District to construct the Avera Cancer Institute and related parking facilities at South Cliff <coughs> Avenue and East 23rd Street. Item number 13, 2008-02-02 uh, is a conditional use permit in the I-2 General Industrial District for an auto repair business at 804 North Weber Avenue. And item 14, 2008-01-17 is a final development plan in subarea A, Interstate Crossings Business Park, PD. Plan Development District to construct a multi-tenant building at South Solberg Avenue and South Broadband Lane. Are there any objections from the audience to any item listed on the consent agenda? Are there any objections from the Planning Commission members to any item listed on the consent agenda? If there are no objections, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? Mr. Chairman, I would recommend approval of the consent agenda. I second. We have a motion. We have a second. Is there any <clears throat> further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 Opposed? Same sign. The consent agenda has been approved. And if your item was one of those mentioned tonight as a part of the consent agenda, you're certainly free to go. Is there a motion at this time to approve the regular agenda? Yes, yes, yes. I'll make a motion to approve. Motion to approve the regular agenda. Is there a second? Second. <clears throat> motion and a second to approve the regular agenda. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 Opposed, same sign. 
The regular agenda has been approved. For the regular agenda, the following normal public hearing procedure will be followed by first requesting planning staff to present a brief report on each item. Second, the petition, petitioner will be requested to come forward to make a statement or answer questions. After the petitioner, anyone from the audience who wishes to address a particular agenda item shall be recognized. Then the Planning Commission will discuss the matter and take appropriate action. We ask that anyone addressing the Commission other than staff move to the podium microphone, identify themselves, and state their address for the record. As a courtesy to everyone here tonight, we ask that you please either turn off or silence your cell phone or pagers. And again, this meeting is being televised on Channel 16. Thank you. Okay, item uh, 15 on the regular agenda uh, is a future land use amendment allowing changes in future land uses to add an allocation of residential parks and open spaces and single family residential future land uses at South Cliff Avenue and South Minnesota Avenue from East 77th to East 85th. Steve. Good evening, Commissioners and members of the audience. My name is Steve Randall. I'll be representing planning staff on this and other items this evening. The subject property uh, is both inside and outside the city limits at the present time. Annexations are underway to include all of it, and it is outside the boundaries of the 2015 growth plan, future land use map. And so the petitioner uh, identifies correctly that new service uh, for sewer capacity is available in that part of town now and opening up land for development, and therefore it is appropriate to include it in our future land use plan. The applicant is proposing um, for this uh, 218 acres of development, including approximately 31 acres of commercial uses, 13 acres of transportation and utilities, and that would be the South Dakota Highway 100 right-of-way that runs through the property, 134 acres of single-family residential uses, and 40 acres of land that would be reserved for drainage way and uh, best management practices for future development. Generally, um, the plan that has been provided by the applicant, Eric Wildson and Wildson Lund Engineering, for the property owners, Don Nix, Dan Lemmy uh, of South Cliff Grasslands, and Bonnie Peterson Mogan, representing Diamond Valley, indicates uh, commercial development along the uh, east side of the property, which is separated from single-family residential by parks and open space, actually conservation land for the drainage improvements in the future. The total area that could be developed in this area because of the new uh, sewer capacity is approximately 700 acres, so we can expect to see more of these types of applications in the future. This one seems to be appropriate uh, in land use uh, because it is separating the commercial uses from the residential. And because the uh, commercial area indicated in red on the screen is uh, buffered and is along a high traffic route, is an appropriate use. Staff is recommending approval, and we've had no calls on this application. That concludes staff report. Any questions for Steve? Thank you, Steve. Is the petitioner present? Good evening, my name is Eric Willardson, Willardson Lund Engineering, 902 South Cleveland, here tonight representing the owners of the property. Uh, as Steve explained, this is uh, future land use in light of the addition of the Diamond Valley lift station area that encompasses about 700 acres of land uh, that's now sewerable. That lift station is fully functional and operational. Um, the reason we're here for the future land use amendment is to include some additional area to the Grand Prairie East Plan Development District for uh, bringing the rezoning of that to you uh, in the future. It adjusts some boundaries uh, due to some realignments on 77th Street. And at the present time, the uh, regional detention pond uh, that you, it's kind of indicated in green on both sides of uh, proposed South Dakota 100 has been completed 
and is in process of being turned over to the city. I guess with that, I would answer any questions anyone would, would have concerning this uh, future land use amendment. Any questions for Eric? Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Is there anyone in the audience tonight that cares to address this item? Apparently not. Commission action? I'll move for approval of, sorry, I'll move for approval of item 15. I'll second. We have a motion and a second to approve item 15. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all of those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 Opposed, same sign. <coughs> item 15 is approved. Item 16 is a uh, rezone RD residential and RA1 residential districts to Bronto PD Plan Development District at South Ebenezer Avenue and West Graceland Court. Shauna. Thank you, Mr. Chair. My name is Shauna Goldhammer, and I'm representing planning staff this evening. The applicant is proposing to construct multifamily dwellings in a planned development zoning district. There is a private street, Graceland Place, to the east. There are existing single-family fam homes nearing the rezone parcel. The current alignment of streets is proposed to be vacated, and the applicant is proposing an amended preliminary subdivision plan which will define the new street pattern and the lot and block layout. There are multiple uh, items that need to be provided with an initial development plan prior to zoning to a planned development district, and those are listed in your addendum packet. I want to touch on just a couple of them. The applicant has provided a plan that indicates multifamily residential land uses with up to 144 dwelling units. The unit mix has not been provided. That means the number of those 40, 144 units, which are uh, one, two, or three bedroom uh, dwellings. There are no non-residential buildings indicated on the plan that was provided. The applicant is proposing to provide yards and setbacks in the same uh, manner as in a traditional zoning district. The applicant is here this evening should the Planning Commission wish to discuss uh, the development sequence. The applicant has held neighborhood meetings. In previous zoning requests, there have been neighborhood prop neighboring property owners concerned with land use changes. The applicant has held two neighborhood meetings and uh, prior to the present presentation of this rezoning to the Planning Commission. Because the application uh, calls for design characteristics that accommodate greenways and because the application will be required to provide a final development plan, staff is recommending approval of the rezoning and the proposed development regulations are included in your packet. And that concludes staff report. Any questions of Shauna? We, oh, I should note that we did receive one uh, letter of opposition to this rezoning, and that was included in the Planning Commission's packet. Okay. Thank you, Shauna. Is the applicant here this evening? Good evening. My name is Paul Reynolds, Reynolds Construction Management Services, 6809. South Minnesota Avenue, Sioux Falls. Uh, I'm here tonight representing the Bronto Development Group. Just to bring a little bit of history into this overall development, the original developer was planning on constructing and selling twin homes in this secluded property area. Unfortunately, that development was unsuccessful. My client started negotiations to purchase this property back in April of 07. Final, final transactions were completed in June of 07. The development group's original plan was to stay consistent with the previous developer and construct twin homes and condominiums on the balance of the 12 acres. After procuring the property, the development group employed the services of Brian Wiseman Construction to finish the balance of the townhomes in the development. These townhomes were in various stages of construction and needed to be completed for them to sell the units. These particular building permits were taken out in June of 07. 
Over the next two months, the Del Velman Group spent approximately $250,000 to bring these units to the point that they could actually sell them. While this work was being completed, the developer had submitted an application to the city requesting a rezoning application from RS2 residential district to an RA1 residential district. This application was officially approved by the City of Sioux Falls the first part of September of 07. All was in line for the development to go forward. Unfortunately, in September of 07, FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, came to the City of Sioux Falls in September to talk about the new elevations and the new FEMA maps that were going to be presented. The intent was to inform the city and the local counties of the new base flood elevations in which FEMA would like to have enforced in the near future. With these new proposed elevations, it would have a great impact on this particular development location due that it's right along the Skunk Creek Basin area. In the new FEMA maps, this particular area actually ends up being in what's considered the AE district, which means it's actually its base flood elevation has been established. For this development to move forward, for them to get any construction or actually to get projects going underneath the new standards that FEMA would have, certain areas where these buildings would be constructed would have to be raised approximately seven feet. Basically, that's the history of this particular development itself. That's what brings us, I guess, to this application that we do have today. The Bronto Development Group has submitted an application to the city for rezoning the property and also to create a new plan development district. The developer has worked with and tried to address any and all of the neighborhood concerns related to this development. This would include the neighbors directly impacted in this particular PD and those that are actually outside of the zone area. We have conducted two local neighborhood meetings in which all local neighborhoods surrounded in the area have been invited to. We have worked with the city engineering department to make sure that those local residents who are not directly in the applications plan development district have had all access issues addressed for them to enter and exit the area. Actually, the roadways would not be altered during this, in this current plan for the development of the multifamily units. Basically, the roads would stay intact. The only location which these roads would actually be hindered would be down in the area where the new multifamily units would be built. That particular road would actually be removed and it becomes a parking lot as depicted up on the screen. Some questions have been raised on the balance of the development and how the rest of the area is going to be developed. It's unclear at this time. We will need to understand what the city's intent is with the Corps of Engineers and the levy system surrounding and the federal funding that's going to come through or is planned to come through for raising the levy systems around the city of Sioux Falls. We cannot answer for the city on the federal funding mechanism, but the overall long-term intent of the developer is to build and provide a high-quality multifamily development along the new proposed Ebenezer Roadway. We have also researched market studies and got some information from some local <laughs> rental agencies regarding this particular application of providing multifamily units so close to another large multifamily unit area. Vacancy rates in this area are very low. We're looking at numbers of four to five percent ratios on what that market study has to say right now. So there is a lot of need for rental in this particular area. The developer has agreed to the stipulations as illustrated by the city planning office. <coughs> we will provide a final greenway plan during the final development plan process. The site development and building locations will be raised to accommodate for the new base flood elevation as directed by FEMA. And the development sequence for this proposed plan development district will be addressed during the final development planning stage. Any questions? Any questions for Paul? Paul, oh, I've got a couple. I think uh, there are currently existing twin homes that have been built and occupied in part of this area that you want to redo. That is correct, yes. I think I've been told that the contractor has going back into the marketplace, buying these twin homes back. That is correct to take them out? The, the intent that the developer has right now is the twin homes that are currently located there is they are going to raise those and they're going to relocate them to another location within the city of Sioux Falls. So the, the parcel that you're showing or the parcel that you'd like us to rezone 
there would be no other twin homeowners in that particular area. You've bought all of those back. There is one gentleman that uh, the developer is currently negotiating with at this time as far as one of the units that is still there, but that negotiation is in place right now. Else all of the other twin homes they do own. When we go further to the east of your plan proposal, there are still some twin homes in that particular location. Correct. Has your developer also purchased those twin homes? They have purchased several of those twin homes. There are, there is a twin home that is at the far end of the development currently that is, that is a residence for a couple of families down there. And they have talked to those about the procurement of their properties as well. Those were the folks that came to your neighborhood meeting? Yes. Okay, thank you, Paul. Okay. Any other questions? Any other questions for Paul? The, the units that Ken was just referencing, it, are, are all those areas affected by the FEMA? The whole area is actually affected by FEMA that's down in there. Um, even the land to the north, past our development, that whole area is impacted by the new FEMA elevations. The current site that we're at right now with the new elevations for us where we're going to construct our buildings, we'll be raising those sites in the neighborhood of that five to seven feet ratio. Thanks. Any other questions for Paul? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. I, you talked about your neighborhood meetings. Uh, how, how well were they attended and who attended them? Were they the adjoining landowners? Uh, just talk a little bit about that. The people who attended our local neighborhood meetings is we had the current residents who were in the immediate area. They attended the meetings. If they didn't attend the first one, they ended up attending the second one. Uh, our second meeting, we also had some adjoining property owners to the north that did attend our meeting as well. The reason we had two meetings is, be very direct on that, is our first meeting that we had, there was only several people that attended. So we did is we immediately set a second meeting, sent out notices to people again to have that, and then we even followed up with them to make sure that they had the opportunity to attend. And that would be the people in the immediate area and also the adjoining property owners were all sent invitations. Okay. Any more questions for Paul? Just one more question. The um, people in the immediate vicinity that you're talking about, those are single family homes then? They're twin homes as well. They're all twin homes? Yep. There is a single family residency that is there, but it is actually on the far end of the development, and it's actually not in our particular property area, but it abuts against the backside of the interstate. That is the only single family dwelling that is out there. And that would be to the east, Paul? Yes, so that is correct. Mm -hmm. The one thing I think that was depicted on the plans, as you guys did see, is the new proposed Ebenezer Avenue as it goes through this property. This particular developer, he has, you know, there's a portion of his property that is also going to be taken up by that new proposed roadway. Any more questions for Paul? Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience tonight that wishes to address this <laughs> item? Eric Willardson, Willardson Lund Engineering. Didn't expect to be back this soon. Uh, I represent the owners of the Foxmore Steeplechase Apartments that have property immediately to the north and west of this site. Uh, they contacted me uh, today with, with some questions about it. And, and uh, I guess right now I would say uh, we brought forth a final development plan for that site which now Ebenezer seems to cross right over the top of and essentially uh, will, would require a, a significant change to that plan. I didn't hear anyone uh, from the city, uh, you know, Paul addressed it a little bit, that, that the alignment on Ebenezer would be changing. I guess, uh, as you can see, it cuts right across the corner of the property that my clients have an option to buy. Uh, I'm not sure, it, it, it certainly affects the final development plan as it was approved by this body. Uh, and we're not sure exactly what the plans are for Ebenezer and, and why we're not taking into consideration previously approved 
final development plans with Ebenezer, and, and I'm not sure they've that, that anybody from the city has contacted the owners to say, you know, we're thinking about cutting this road across your property. And um, wouldn't Ebenezer need to be vacated then to, to do that? And if it's rezoned now, uh, it seems like, to me anyway, it seems like the vacation should come before the rezoning. Um, I, I'm just a little puzzled about the Ebenezer situation. Any questions for questions? Like I say, it does cross a, mm -hmm. a previously approved final development plan. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Shauna? <clears throat> Maybe I can address some of those questions. There is a minor amendment to the Graceland Edition preliminary plan uh, that has been submitted to the city. The minor amendments are handled administratively. We asked that the applicant in this case provide the, mo the best estimate of where the right-of-way would be relocated. Uh, it isn't designed. It is in the process of uh, conception, if you will. And so certainly if the, the road is realigned, the, the property owners would most certainly be made aware, if not contacted, for acquisition of land for that right of way. Um, right now, within the Graceland addition, they are do handing an administrative minor amendment to the preliminary plan. There's a uh, uh, request to vacate streets, changing them from public streets to private streets, realigning, vacating. Um, and that's all handled with the lot and block layout with the preliminary plan. So there are plans, and I encourage Eric and the, the uh, owners to the north to come down to the engineer's office to review those plans and provide us comments. Thanks, Sean. Any questions mm -hmm. for Sean? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. If, if the Planning Commission approves this rezoning, that doesn't necessarily mean that we're approving the realignment of Ebenezer. Absolutely. That is correct. Thank you. Any other questions for Shauna? Thank you, Shauna. Paul? Can I address an issue on Ebenezer? Come forward. The information that we received on Ebenezer as far as its alignment in its particular location, we received that information through the City Engineering Department. We went through them to get that information, then back and forth with JSA, our particular engineers, is how it was going to lay out across our property. I understand the property of the north is being impacted, but if you actually take a look at our parcel of property for this particular PD, it is running the whole width of our development is taking up a large portion of what our property is. The developer, you know, for this process or this application to build multifamily units there, they have no issue right now with Ebenezer cutting across their property. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I thank think you. we understand that this is really a land use issue tonight, not an engineering issue. So thank you, though. Anyone else in the audience tonight that wishes to address this item? If not, uh, commission action. Mr. Chair, I'll recommend approval of item number 16 for the rezone. I second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion regarding item 16? I think for myself, I think uh, having discovered that they are buying the existing twin homes and not impacting that, the particular neighbors right there, I think has me leaning towards supporting uh, this particular motion. I believe there are uh, some additional property to the east. I guess I've discovered I think they're in the process of trying to work with those folks and perhaps are trying to also buy those twin homes. I think all the twin homes who are there have a problem with, with the FEMA situation. Uh, I guess knowing that they're in the process and doing what has been explained to me, I think I could support the motion. I agree, Kenny. I think the issue really isn't with the change in development. It is with the FEMA situation, and um, that has changed every 
person in that neighborhood's perspective, I think, and um, they need to do what they need to do to. I do see Eric's make point here in regards to this Ebenezer, but I, I think that is an issue that has to be taken in a final preliminary plan uh, with the neighbors to the north, mm -hmm. as far as aligning the road. Any other con discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 Opposed, same sign. Item 16 is approved. Item 17 is a rezone from RS2 Residential District to the O Office District to accommodate the Ronald McDonald House at 17th between South Lake Avenue and Southwest Avenue. Steve. Current property owners are represented by Don Coyman and Sanford USD Medical Center. Uh, the property is right adjacent to some previously uh, zoned land or rezoned land from residential to office. And at that time uh, was looked at as a transitional use between the uh, institutional uses of the medical campus to the surrounding residential neighborhood. And I believe we still have that situation here. Uh, it has uh, expanded somewhat further to the north, but only to accommodate uh, office type uses, again, because of the transitional nature of the request. To the north, are and on all sides are single-family residential except for the office parcel that is currently under development and the uh, institutional campus as well. We look at older residential neighborhoods as worth preserving and we do that with transitional uses uh, to assist with that. Located between South Lake Avenue and Southwest Avenue north of West 17th Street, uh, the property is accessible on two sides a driveway on South Lake Avenue and a parking lot access in Southwest Avenue. They provided a concept plan for the development of the property, indicating uh, 20 parking spots and uh, a building on the east side of the property, fronting uh, South Lake Avenue. Subject property is located within 600 feet of a church, and the applicant should be prepared to report any neighborhood comments at, the, at this public hearing. Because it is a proposed transitional use to the neighborhood, uh, which will, in effect, stabilize that boundary for the uh, medical campus, <coughs> and we've not received any calls from uh, neighbors. Staff is recommending approval of the rezoning, and that concludes staff report. Any questions for Steve regarding item 17? Steve, that office to the uh, south, that's the Make-A-Wish? Make-A-Wish Foundation, Foundation, that's correct. Will we have an opportunity to uh, take a look at a final design plan for this particular building? Uh, we will not with the conventional office type zoning. Uh, however, the concept plan that's been submitted along with the requirements of the O office district for a conditional use permit, and I take that back, a conditional use permit is required for uh, the Ronald McDonald House at this office type zoning. And in fact, we did receive an application uh, today for that conditional use. It'll be coming up next month. I say that. I, I, I drove around the area there. I thought they were doing a unique design to the Make-A-Wish building. Should uh, be compatible. Yeah, giving it a, a house-type look. They're mm -hmm. still an awful lot of nice single-family housing around this. Yeah. Any other questions for Steve? Okay. Is the petitioner present? Good evening. Orland Cheddar, Vice President of Facilities at Sanford USD Medical Center, 1305 West 18th Street. Uh, our involvement in this project, frankly, is pretty straightforward. We are uh, long-term leasing these six lots to the uh, folks from Ronald McDonald House for the construction of a, a property there. Um, as has been already mentioned, this property will sit directly to the north of the Make-A-Wish building that is currently under construction. And uh, if there are questions specifically about the project, I know that Ron Nelson, the chair of the uh, uh, board for the Ronald McDonald House is here as well. Uh, questions about the rezoning, I'd be happy to try and answer. If not, uh, I know that he is here as well. Thank you, Orlin. Is there any, are there any questions for Orlin? Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? in the audience tonight that cares to address uh, item number 17. 
Good evening, my name's Elizabeth Hubner, 400 North Jeremy Circle. I own the property on the corner of 17th and West, the little yellow box that's now gonna be surrounded mm -hmm. from um, the Make-A-Wish on one side and um, the Ronald McDonald behind. I have concerns about being surrounded by cement for one thing, a lot of activity, um, I've yet to see any privacy fencing going up around my property. Um, the noise. Um, I have concerns about being locked in by commercial property. Any questions for Elizabeth? Elizabeth, are you saying you would be against us rezoning this to allow this to take place? I would be against it, with, especially if there aren't provisions to be putting privacy fencing around my property. We'll talk to staff in a minute and just see what some of those requirements might be and if you might have a say into the final design plans. Okay. Uh, did you have concerns when the uh, Make-A-Wish building was brought to us? in? And approved were you aware of that at the I time was it not able to attend that meeting I did talk to people from make a wish about their encroaching on the property ask them to put up a privacy fence have not heard from them okay thank you and it's noisy and um, interferes with with uh, normal daily activity Elizabeth, are you the only home or house on that block then? Um, are there others? Put up that. Uh, no, the yellow and blue. Yeah, I'd be that yellow one right in the corner. Correct. But the make a wish is on the blue corner, and then you're going to put the Ronald McDonald behind. I believe this is going to come back as another uh, at another meeting, probably in April, okay. as a conditional use permit. And I would certainly advise you to consult with city staff about uh, that next application and its process. Okay. Thank Any you. other questions for Elizabeth? I'm sorry. Thank you. Anyone else in the audience tonight that wishes to address item number 17? My name is Ron Nelson, 122 South Phillips Avenue, representing the Ronald McDonald House. So Steve's going to put up an elevation, which doesn't appear that you had, and just kind of wanted to show uh, what we're putting up and what uh, uh, it will look like. We're engaging the services of TSP, the same firm who did the Make-A-Wish Foundation, and very cognizant of the residential nature of the area and trying to design a building that's uh, largely residential in nature as well and uh, hoping that um, it'll do a nice job of fitting in with the neighborhood. We've got a 25-year track record of being a good neighbor around the Augustana area where we're at now at 28th and Norton and we're just real excited to uh, have this opportunity to locate near the Sanford Children's Hospital. Uh, this will be an 18 guest room facility uh, as far as, and I think there's a site plan as part of that, um, it does show some green greenery screening. I don't know that we've got down to the details yet as far as privacy fencing versus landscape and shrubbery type screening. I think we should be open and perhaps the architects have made those decisions that I'm not aware of, but um, we are certainly you know, wanting to be good neighbors and actually thinking that shrubbery and greenery would probably provide a more eye-appealing visual uh, uh, method of accomplishing that. Uh, as far as noise, you know, first of all, these are people that uh, aren't really in a uh, noise, noisy type of uh, mode. It's uh, families of very ill children 
They don't spend a lot of time in the house. They're largely with their kids. But uh, as you know, with uh, our mission, we provide kind of a, a place for them to, to crash and um, you know, be there for days, weeks, or sometimes even months. So uh, with that, happy to answer any further questions that you may have. I guess I also should mention uh, we took a packet that included these elevations, a letter, some information about the Ronald McDonald House to 16 of the what we felt were most affected neighbors. Those were hand-delivered by me. I spoke to nine of the property owners that uh, lived in those neighborhoods. We did conduct a neighborhood meeting at the house that um, give people an opportunity that, um, to, to see our house. It wasn't that particularly well attended. I didn't really see much in the way of objection in the uh, folks that we did visit with as far as uh, neighbors. Uh, I think more than anything, they just kind of wanted to get some information, some factual information. And so we hope that we were able to provide that for them. So happy to answer any of your questions. Mr. Any Chair. question uh, for Ron? Ron, had you ever met Elizabeth before? No, had not. I, I, do you live in the property, or is that a rental for you? Okay, yeah, I, I had not. Would you be willing to uh, maybe uh, get her night name and number when, when we're done tonight? Absolutely. And show her some final plans as far as, well, that'll come back through here with the conditional yeah. use permit. The, the, the house you guys have on Norton, you're, not, you're going to continue to operate that one? That's we actually have uh, two houses being built right now. There's also one being constructed on the Avera campus as part of the Walsh Village that's kind of been in the news recently. And uh, that's actually going to open before this one. That's going to open this summer. And um, we'll have that going in conjunction with the 28th and Norton uh, house. And then once this one is done, the offices and kind of the headquarters, if you will, will be on the Sanford campus, and at that time we'll vacate 28th and Norton. How many units is the one on Norton, Ron? Nine. We have nine guest rooms now. Is that typically full every day? Uh, it's not as full as it should be, and uh, the reason that's been identified for that is the uh, lack of close proximity to the hospital. You know, minutes count sometimes when you've got, you know, a child that, uh, you know, is... Um, uh, touch and go, and uh, it, believe it or not, in our small town, uh, for people, most of these people aren't from town, and a lot of them have trouble finding the hospital, if you've ever tried parking at the hospital, and a lot of them don't have transportation. So for those reasons, you know, we've learned through the global Ronald McDonald organization out of Chicago that being on site is really... Uh, you know, kind of the new trend as far as where the houses are moving. And everything we've done has been approved by that organization as far as market studies and things like that to determine kind of the feasibility of what's the right number of rooms for our marketplace. And so we're approaching this with some trepidation because it's quite a bit larger than we have now, but uh, we're relying on the data provided by them to build these at the size that we're building. Thank you, Ron. Yes. Any other questions for Ron? Ron, you wouldn't be opposed then to um, constructing a, a fence, a, some type of a screening? I wouldn't. Uh, I don't have any authority. But uh, Okay. Uh, no, I, I think, again, the purpose of the screening, I'm sure, was that I haven't had that direct conversation with the architect, but, you know, I kind of understand the process. So I think we'd be more than happy to, you know, provide a solution that neighbors are happy with. I want to commend your group for providing such a great service, but also this looks like a very nice facility. Thank you, Pam. Any other questions for Ron? Thanks, Ron. Thank you. Anyone else in the audience that would like to address item 17? Thank you. My name is Betty Tweet, and I live in the 800 block of Southwest and have been there since 1955. I have no problem with the development of Sanford, except that they have made our street a, like a racetrack, because they've closed off all the entries to the north from Grange Avenue to our street. There's no access except through maybe their parking lots. 
to go north. And as a result, the traffic has increased so much over all these years. It's not a safe place for children to play, I assure you. And this is my greatest concern, what they're do going to do to control this growth and all the traffic that goes along with Sanford's, you know, development. And it's a wonderful program. I have no problem with it. They take great care of their property, but I am concerned with the traffic. Thank you. Any questions for Betty? Betty? Would you, do you have a problem with this particular, with this, with this particular building where, well, where they're like asking the, to put it? I object to the way they have dealt with this and tried to pressure people in the block to sell their property. I have one neighbor who was almost a basket case because of the calls she received. She likes living in the neighborhood and for what she would get out of the house, she could not find compatible, you know, for the money she would get for her house, any place in Sioux Falls that, you know. And I, I just don't like the way they have dealt with this, too. They probably showed us, where do you live in conjunction to this? You're on the lake? This would be, the parking lot would be directly across from my house. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for Betty? Yes, I live on the west. Directly across from where they planned with the parking lot. Thank you. Anyone else that care, would care to address item 17 tonight? If not, commission action. I'll move for approval of item 17. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? I think that every time, um, you know, we deal in this area, it, the issues are tough just relative to the conversion of the neighborhood and, and the impacts. Um, the beautiful building that we've seen today is very well designed, and I hope that they can work through, continue to work through some of the issues with the neighbors to provide screening. Um, but this is just a tough neighborhood. But I, I will move in approval of this building tonight. Any, any more discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 Opposed, same sign. Item 17 is approved. Item 18 is a rezone. From RS1 Residential District to the RD Residential District for development of a duplex at 7400 West 22nd Street, Shauna. Thank you. The applicant is proposing to convert an existing single-family home into a duplex. Uh, this particular parcel does have quite a, a zoning history. In April 2001, Block 10, uh, portions of Block 10, including this lot, were rezoned from the RD District to the RS1 District by the developer. The developer at the time proposed land uses extending north of 22nd Street along Saratoma and Lindenwald Drive exclusively for single-family detached housing. And uh, last summer, you re may recall, we had a couple of different applications, one for a daycare center, and that was in June of 2007. And then in August of 2007, uh, we received uh, application for an assisted living facility. There were three stipulations on or conditions of approval on that conditional use permit, but the decision was uh, the decision was appealed to the city council and they affirmed the decision to approve the conditional use for the assisted living center with conditions. The applicant is proposing to rezone to the RD residential district. The RD residential district does allow for two family dwellings. Additionally, there, uh, with a conditional use, you could be um, allowed up to four dwelling units on the subject parcel. The applicant has had a neighborhood meeting and has explained the project to both staff and the neighboring property owners. Staff has received phone calls in opposition of this rezoning request and neighboring property owners were under the assumption that the area would be developed as single family dwellings. The applicant has provided adequate information to understand this request. However, staff has concerns with changing a, land, a change in zone for such a small parcel after the 
development of surrounding uses. Spot zoning or process of zoning a single parcel solely for the benefit of a private interest is not in keeping with the spirit or intent of the zoning ordinance. Because staff does, because the application is within a single family zoning district and the area was intended for single family detached housing and the zoning would separate it from and would be considered a spot zone, staff does recommend denial of this rezoning request. And that concludes staff report. Any questions for Shauna? Uh, Shauna, in the analysis that talks about the August 2007 uh, conditional use that was approved and then appealed, mm -hmm. and that is still good, would that be correct? The conditional use was good for 12 months? Right. Yes, that is still a valid conditional use permit. But the applicant has not acted on that particular conditional use. I believe the applicant is here this evening and they can explain. Uh, I think that the, the process of converting that, including sprinkler systems, was cost prohibitive. So that's why okay. that particular project did not move forward. Thank you. Any more questions for Shauna? Mr. Chair, uh, Shauna, the previous one that we just approved, and let's take it back to when we approved the Make-A-Wish building. Okay. We went to a single-family residence. Mm -hmm. I think across the street was uh, Sioux Valley's clinic, uh, cancer center and such. Mm -hmm. Would that also have been spot zoning when we approved that? The Make-A-Wish Foundation? The Make-A-Wish Foundation building. We consider that a transitional land use. And so at that time, that one did get approved. With Memorial Middle School across the street from this one, could some property along that street be considered transitional to, to the single family? Are we not using twin homes today to separate? We do use multifamily as a transitional land use, yes. Staff's uh, uh, reason for not wanting to approve this if the whole block were coming in, would that be a different story or not yes, be would. spot zoning then? And, and as well as if the developer had not intended on uh, providing a neighborhood of single family detached housing. If it had developed as, as twin homes along there, we wouldn't be here this mm -hmm. evening. Thank you, Shauna. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for Shauna? Thank you, Shauna. Is the petitioner here? Good evening, Verlin Fast, 1205 South Tayberry Avenue. This property is about a block is a block away from the one we're talking about here. Uh, I know you guys know that a definition of a spot zone, but it occurs when a relatively small tract of land is zoned differently from the surrounding area. So I want to look at the surrounding area, but uh, this isn't a spot zoning. If it were, there would not be any twin homes in the area. There are twin homes everywhere. Uh, if I were asking you to rezone my home at 1205 South Tayberry, Tayberry, which is within the development, this would be a spot zone. Uh, 7400 West 22nd doesn't have single family all around it. It's the only property in this development with the 22nd Street address, and that might fall into the transition area. Uh, there are already 14 twin homes across the street from my property. Uh, with the size of this home being 6,000 square foot, it's two garages and two driveways that are already exist. The home had already given the appearance and reputation in the neighborhood of being a duplex for four years. Uh, this was before any of the other homes were built and sold in the area. There are, no, again, no changes being made on the exterior of the home. It's basically, it's already, it's already a beautiful duplex. Uh, we have tried desperately to sell this house, this property, since November of 2006, and we welcome anyone interested to purchase the property. I would not consider this property a benefit to own at this point. I am simply trying to maintain it and not be held at a disadvantage. Uh, 
I am being held at a disadvantage with this property by not being able to use it as a duplex due to its zoning. I have not been able to sell this property due to the changes such as the traffic light, no parking in front of my house, and the increased traffic over the past four years. This cha these changes warrant a change in zoning since the area is different since it was originally developed. Uh, twin homes and duplexes are already used in the city to buffer the single family homes transition and rezoning this property only stays within the spirit and intent of zoning ordinance that already exists. Thank you. Any questions for Verlin? Verlin, when, when you said there's 16 twin homes, would that be across the street to the east? Yes. Memorial Middle School is across from, the street to the south. From 22nd to 26th Street on Sertoma. Yes. Okay. And how about right directly across the street to the east? I, uh, there's a church in there. Yeah. There? On the bordering the south side of Memorial, there's multi-housing in there all the way around Memorial. Uh, on the On the west side of Discovery, I believe that's still zoned RD but single families have been built there. Does the front of your house face the west or does it face the south? Is it facing south on the... Uh... It's, it's the only house that faces the south, which, you know, sets me apart from the development. Uh, I spoke with uh, Chuck Point uh, a few weeks ago. He changed the zoning from the RD to RS, and he seemed, he was neutral on it, and he really has the most houses that are still for sale in the area and empty lots still for sale. So if there should be some real concern, it, it should, should be from Mr. Ronning and he's neutral on it, you know. And uh, a duplex seems like a lesser use than, uh, than assisted living, a lesser purpose. Berlin, these people might be here to speak for themselves, but can you tell us about how you feel the neighborhood feels about this particular application? Uh, when we had the neighborhood meeting, it was expressed that uh, they really, I, I thought it went quite well. They didn't seem to have any concern if I had somebody living in the basement, if I rented it out and we lived upstairs, that seemed to be fine, but they didn't understand why we had to rezone it. And uh, can't have two families living in a single family home. And, uh, Any other questions so, for Verlin? So can you clarify that? So they're they're opposed they're they seem to be okay with the idea of renting the basement out they seem to be I don't know if I could put the word up opposed to it but they didn't understand well, why do you have to rezone it why can't you just have somebody move in and rent the basement out we're okay, okay. with that maybe they're here to tell us tonight so thank you Verlin one other question what would you have to do to this house to make that a legal apartment in the basement uh, uh, Nothing on the exterior. The heat and air systems that's in there are already separated as such. There's a separate unit that's just for the basement that's 2,600 square foot. The other unit is already for the rest of the house. Uh, from building services, I understand there, the, for fire separation in the basement on the ceiling, there needs to be two layers of 5 8 sheetrock. So here comes the second layer and a one hour fire door at the bottom of the steps. And I'm about done. And that's probably about all I could afford to do right now. How about fire system? Is there a, uh, are, you, are, you, are you required to put in a fire system, that alarm mm -hmm. system that works in? No, the that makes it even a little friendlier deal, I would think, for the neighborhood that I'm not going to be invasive on the home and install a, a full-blown commercial sprinkler system with a six-inch water main coming from the street that would have cost me 30000 40000 Thank you, Verlin. Any other questions for Verlin? Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone in the audience tonight that cares to address item number 18? Good evening. Uh, Brett Stanley, 1409 South Lindenwald. I uh, reside in the property directly west of uh, the 7400 uh, property. Um, I'm speaking on behalf of a majority of the neighbors, some of which who couldn't be here for uh, other prior uh, engagements. Um, we did have a meeting uh, 
to our knowledge, the, the, the sheet that was handed out at the meeting was that the basement was to be rented to family members. And that was the question we had as to why to, to rezone went renting to family members. Um, we did talk with some rounding individuals, and they did it, 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 uh, inform us that it was it, it was developed as a residential neighborhood, not a duplex. If they wanted that, that's what they would have left it at. Um, so, again, we are against, we are opposed to the changing of this, to uh, the rezoning. So. Any questions for Brent? So, knowing that that right now an assisted living center could go into that location and and that's what could happen in that location right now you think that this is a step backwards from well that? we we talked about we, we I guess we're kind of opposed to all of it uh, you know we, we were we weren't for any of it uh, I guess uh, the duplex deal was we figured it's just kind of a you know, I guess you want to say a last-ditch effort because of possible foreclosure on this house. We're just you know, grasping at straws. So, you know, like I said, and you were opposed to the assisted living cent living center Correct. situation, also. Yeah. No. But the fact of the matter is that it, it 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 they could put an assisted living center in that house right now. I mean, it's zoned for that. Well, they they they, they got approved for the the permit. Yeah. Correct. And the impact of an assisted living has more potential to impact you than? Well, uh, it, it possibly could if it was to, to actually happen. Yeah. In, in driving by that, it, it already looks like a duplex or a twin home because of the two driveways and the two garage doors. Um, because it looks that way, do you still feel opposed to? To having it be too, uh, uh, too. I, I feel that the, the double garage is pretty much the only thing that resembles a duplex. I mean, it's it's just two garages. The, the, the front of the house looks like a regular two-story. But applicant said there wouldn't be anything changed on the outside, so it really wouldn't change anything. Well, what we kind of feel too is that if it does get rezoned, you can have the possibility of the four, the four you know possible four tenants there. Who, who knows what kind of you know close to a school. Uh, what kind of people would be moving in? We we just feel that you know we don't know what we would have you know no control what would be going on there as far as the, the tenants or you know what kind of go on it would it be parking on the street as 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 the assisted living would would have the impact on that also. Maybe just a question to clarify the the duplex scenario that's proposed is it a is it an owner an owned situation or is it a rental situation? We were informed that he was going to occupy and then rent to a family member in the basement. That's what the, at the neighborhood meeting was we were informed of. And Am I do I? believe we have a, I don't have it with me, but we do have a, a, a copy of that. This, uh, this item 18 is a rezone to allow a duplex, not a twin home in this case. Any other questions for Brett? Thank you. Right, thank you. Anyone else uh, here tonight that wishes to address item 18? I, I just want to clarify the, the whole duplex, twin home, mm -hmm. owner-occupied renter. Uh, the request is for the RD residential district. That does allow for twin home or a single family attached as well as a duplex. The difference between a duplex and a twin home as far as the land use goes is a platted property line down the middle of it. This one would be over and under, so it would be considered a duplex. Whether it's rented or owner occupied really doesn't matter. They're proposing with the applicant's plan is to do an over and under two dwelling unit. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Shauna, one, one other question. If this was rented to a family member, he'd be allowed to do that under right. the Right. The, there is no limit to people who are related in a single family home. Uh, you can't have any more than three unrelated people living in a single family home. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm Herb Jones, 1308 South. Is Lynn. it Herb? Herb. Herb. -E 1308 South Lindenwald, okay. and I just wanted to make sure um, there are others from the neighborhood too. We didn't want to have everybody get up and speak, but there were others here as well. We, in the past. we appreciate that. Any questions for Herb? 
Herb, I, I guess I'd ask you the same question. An assisted living impact versus a, a duplex impact. Well, I'll tell you too, from our perspective, we moved into a single family residential neighborhood. That's what we wanted. That's what we hope to be living in. The questions about how the adjoining properties or whatever, if you drive up there, and I encourage you to if you haven't, I've that been whole there. neighborhood is, is RD1. It was all developed that way. That's what we thought we moved into. That's what we hoped we would have. I think it's existing RS1. I'm sorry. Yeah, single family. I'm sorry, yeah. Single family. Any other questions for her? Thank you. Anyone else caring to address this issue? We'll uh, entertain one more and uh, try to make your testimony different and re relevant. Uh, my name is Giselle Sheffy. We live at 1400 South Lindenwall Drive. We live directly north of the property at hand. And to me, it does not look like a duplex. When I drive by, when we first moved in the area, to me, it did not look like a duplex. It looked like somebody who li really liked garage space, like my husband does. If he looked at that and went, oh, somebody's got two double stall garages. To me, that does not make it a duplex, just because it's got double garages. Um, I don't feel the need to have something to buffer in our neighborhood. Um, I know it was going to be an assisted living. It wasn't under our control. We really didn't want it. But so be it, and now it's not going to. So again, like Brett had said, we feel like it's just becoming grabbing at straws to try and do something with the property. The one thing that was um, addressed at the neighborhood meeting, again, was the fact that they were going to live in it. We want to make sure that it is what it's going to be, not, okay, we're going to tell you that it's going to be that, and then later on, well, now we're going to rent it to two separate families. That's our biggest concern. And again, the whole idea of family living, do you need to have a uh, rezone for family living with family? That's it. Any questions for Giselle? Thank you. Okay, then we'll close uh, testimony tonight and uh, consider commission action on item 18. Uh, Mr. Chair, regarding item number 18, I think given the history of this neighborhood, given the history of the number of times that this property has been before us, it seems clear that we have a responsibility to keep this RS1. Um, if we allow a change in this uh, land use, then there could be some other land use. I understand the petitioner's position that there are other pieces of property that are multiple, but there just seems to be a very strong consensus in that particular block and neighborhood that they want to keep this as a single-family neighborhood. So I will uh, make a motion for denial on this item. We have a motion. Is there a second? I'll second that motion. We um, have a motion and a second. Is there further discussion? I agree with David. We've heard a lot of different um, thoughts relative to this piece of property. And, and uh, the one thing that has remained true is that the neighborhood has been opposed to any change in the zoning of this particular piece of property. And I do recognize that there, there is obviously a financial hardship relative to this piece of property, but I think the neighborhood is speaking very clearly. Any other discussion? Anita and Dave, how is this differing a bit from the Ronald McDonald House and Make-A-Wish? We've had a couple neighbors that have come up and I think wanted a pause on that or weren't exactly in favor of it. And I think it goes back to when we did the uh, Make-A-Wish. I do remember at that time <coughs> I, I was going to be against that if any neighbors had shown up. No neighbors showed up. So I thought, okay, right. there we go. Uh, the neighborhood's in favor of it. I, 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 I understand your question, Ken. And, um, you know, to me there's been years and years of history wrapped around Sanford and the growth of that campus and discussion block by block. Um, and that's an older, more established neighborhood. And, and I agree with you, the thing that separates this issue for me tonight is the overwhelming response of that neighborhood. Because certainly without that, 
um, I would look at that particular piece of property and and feel like there would be some more flexibility with it. Um, so that those are the two things that separate it for me. Um, David, my comment would be, Kenny, that the the neighborhood around Sanford is a, uh, and especially the neighborhood that's very close to Sanford, is a neighborhood that's in transition. I don't see, I don't see where this is a transitional neighborhood. Uh, this is a newer neighborhood. Um, it's a it's a uh, it's all RS1. Um, the neighbors overwhelmingly wish to keep it that way. So I think there's a difference there. That's no, fair. we've closed testimony at this point in time. We're considering a motion. Any other discussion regarding the motion? I'm just I'm I'm just a little I'm a little confused. I think as to why the neighborhood would think that this would be more detrimental to the neighborhood than the assisted living. Now I realize I'm not quite sure how that all happened if they didn't have a say in that decision or whatever. But um, I mean I take a look at this, the site plan of the neighborhood and you've got the school across the street one way, you've got um, the church the other way, kitty corner across the street are a number of twin homes. I guess with this just being right on the corner, I'm just having a really tough time understanding why it would be such a huge issue. I, I, I would have to vote against the denial. Any other discussion? Pam, I, I concur with you. I think there's plenty of twin homes in this neighborhood and um, the house is in a transitional position if you ask me. It is, um, there's a lot of traffic on Sertoma, a lot of traffic on 22nd. Um, the schools create a lot of traffic. And as a buffer into that neighborhood, um, I'm not opposed to it. There's plenty of twin homes all around that neighborhood. And, and I, too, I've driven around it. I've seen what's, what it's like. Um, it lends itself fairly easily to a transition to a duplex without much impact on the, the neighboring homeowners and um, so I too would would vote in opposition. Any more discussion? Jesse and Pam, what do you guys feel about staff's recommendation? And, uh, and some of the things we do will affect staff and things down the road. Uh, when they talk about not allowing spot zoning, if this is spot zoning, what does that create down the road for us? I understand, uh, and I'm, un I'm uncomfortable with spot zoning. I truly am. But in this particular situation, I look at the location and the proximity to other things that create a tremendous amount of traffic, whether it be the school, the church. Um, you know, the, the the thing that really has swayed me is the, the twin homes just kitty corner across the street. Now, I might feel differently about this particular situation if this house were located further down on the on the curve, in the middle of the block. I, you know, then I probably would not support rezoning it. But the the biggest issue to me is the location, with it being right there on the corner. Additional, just, additional discussion? If not, are you ready for the question? Maybe we should have a show of hands on, on this one. Uh, all those in favor of uh, David's motion raise their hand. Three. All those opposed, raise your hand. Okay, that motion fails. Is there a substitute motion? Yeah, I'll make a motion to ap approve the item uh, to rezone for a duplex for the proposed property at West 22nd Street. Is there a second? 
I would second that. Any dis we have a motion and a second to approve the rezone. Is there any commission discussion? That was easy. Okay, same show of hands. All of those in favor of the motion to approve the rezone, raise your hand. Thank you. Uh, opposed, same sign. Motion to approve the rezone has passed. Thank you. Item 19 is a rezone from O, office district to RA1, residential district, to allow development of a multi-family apartment building at the northeast corner of East 6th and South Shepherd Avenue. Staff report. Thank you. The applicant is proposing to rezone for a multi-family apartment building. A similar request was approved by the City Council in April of 2007 for the parcel on the west side of Shepherd Avenue. The concept plan indicates a driveway from 6th Street uh, under the proposed design engineering de design standards and access permit would be required in the future for a driveway at this location. The applicant may replat, allowing transfer of portions of the site to a surrounding property owner. That would be the church to the east. Staff would only be concerned with the subdivision of this parcel if there was unbuildable lands that remained. The plan does include the necessary information to understand the request. And because the application allows for infill development and provides for land use transitions, staff does recommend approval of the rezoning. And that concludes staff report. Any questions regarding this item for Shauna? Thank you. Is the petitioner here this evening? I'm Mike Andreessen, uh, 2615 East 12th Street. Uh, I represent uh, investment group. Uh, we're looking at that property there. Uh, uh, we've done an impact and a usage study on it for uh, a multi-family dwelling unit. It come out really well and. Uh, also, the church to the, or the hall to the, would be the east, uh, had approached the city council on possible parking lot there, but they mm -hmm. couldn't afford the whole portion of the land as well. We found that out when we were looking at the property. Uh, there has been somewhat of a change. We're going to use a little bit more of the property, put some garages with the apartments we'd like to, because that seems to be a demand. Uh, the property that would remain would be about 70 feet that could become parking lot then. And they had a plan that would fit into that already that had been pre-approved. The big thing about this property is there's an easement on the north side of it of 30 feet for a storm drain and sewer that came through there. And, and that really, uh, it's difficult to develop on that because of that. And this apartment complex seems to fit reasonably well. Um, there is some question on the exiting on 6th Street right now. We're working with city engineering on that. Uh, there, uh, I, there's a fire lane issue and, and whatnot by not exiting there. Uh, the apartments themselves will be set up two and three bedroom units. There, there'll be ground level. They will also, there's gonna be a little different adjustment there because of some of the spacing to fit handicap. Uh, they would be acceptable to that usage or just multifamily units. So, uh, they were trying to do an exterior that's uh, low in maintenance but yet appealing to the neighborhood. Uh, across the road there, there's other apartment buildings. Um, that's pretty much our goal in the matter there. Any questions for Mike? Thank you, Mike. Is there anyone else here this evening that would like to address item number 19? If not, uh, commission action. 
I move for approval by item number 19. We have a second. motion. Second. And a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all of those in favor of the rezone signify by saying yes. 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 Opposed, same sign. Item 19 is approved. Item 20 is a rezone from AG Agricultural District and the Hadrob Plan Development District to the Sanford Research Park Plan Development District at, so at the southwest corner of East 69th Street and South Tallgrass Avenue. Steve. The subject property has been a planned development district for some time now. Uh, the only thing that has been developed out there until now is, has been an off-premise sign. The applicant uh, now proposes to proceed with a, a major development of a research park that is medically related and has provided us with plans for expanding the existing PD uh, to a larger site to accommodate their plans for both the research park and supporting commercial uses. They've also provided, as required, for a rezoning to a planned development district, a subdivision plan, which is also on this agenda this evening, and the subdivision plan is reflected in the, in the zoning petition. They provided sub-area regulations that describe the character of development uh, and any regulations that they feel are necessary to support the development as it comes forward to you with final development plans for public approvals. Those are listed in your information packet. Uh, the applicant has uh, changed that somewhat uh, here recently, and I would defer to the applicant to come forward and explain to you what changes have taken place with that. But basically, the two sub-areas that are uh, included in the information packet, one being the research park and the other being the commercial support area, are pretty self-explanatory as to the list of uses that they would allow in each one and under what conditions. They provided a concept plan for location of buildings, parking, access, uh, streets, and so on. And also, as you see on the screen, uh, something that uh, indicates what height building would be allowed at certain portions of the site. They have um, investigated the possibilities of uh, restrictions on that, and I believe have a plan that is, uh, can be approved uh, for fire protection and for uh, the airport uh, flight zones, so there shouldn't be any problem there. I, I believe the height uh, allowed has to do more with the type of uh, research facilities that they intend to uh, develop on the site. And, of course, you would have a chance to review that in a final development plan application. It is a 184-acre site, and the applicant is here this evening to uh, address any questions. The initial development plan indicates the size and location of the sub-areas and the phasing of development. Located at the east, uh, east of South Tallgrass Avenue and south of West 69th Street, there is a possibility of a future realignment of West 69th Street, uh, possibly to coincide with an interchange with the interstate. Uh, those plans are not definite yet, and over the period of development for the site, uh, I'm sure that that would iron itself out. The subdivision plan can be uh, looked at as just that, a preliminary subdivision plan in which final plans have to be worked out with city engineers and with the uh, Department of Transportation. The applicant has provided results of a neighborhood meeting held February 18th, uh, and perhaps can report to you the comments uh, from that meeting. Design review regulations in the future would include both the sub-area regulations and I-229 design review, review district, which does come down this far. Um, for Things like uh, off-premise signage for landscaping, for setbacks, screening of parking lots, building materials, and things like that. So uh, staff is uh, considering this to be a complete application for consideration. Uh, there are a couple things that we would like to work with the applicant in cleaning up. They referenced a master signage plan that was included in the sub-area regulations, although there is not one at the present time, unless they have one they'd like to present to you this evening. Uh, the site development indicates the need for shared parking between separate building uh, projects, but that's also not referenced in the sub-area regulations. These are minor things that I think because the applicant has not put together sub-area regulations in the past that staff can assist them 
with getting it into the required format so that zoning can review it when it comes in for a final development plan. The addendum material that you have on the project uh, references the changes in the PD sub-area regulations, and I would allow the or suggest that the applicant come forward to explain that to you. We've had no calls on this, and that concludes staff report, and we're recommending approval. Thank you, Steve. Any questions for Steve? Thank you. Is the applicant uh, here tonight? My name is Kurt Brost, uh, the Director of Development for the Sanford Medical Research Park, 1305 West 18th. Uh, the proposal you see in front of you for the change of land use, we believe in working with staff, has come about to help uh, basically us develop this in a way that will be conducive to attracting the types of businesses uh, and uh, organizations that normally locate in such parks throughout the country. Um, we've worked with staff uh, closely to try to make sure within this plan development we use the existing uh, requirements within our zoning codes that fit that um, and uh, we'll continue to do so uh, as Steve mentioned to make sure that when we come in with the final plan it uh, meets everything that they need. We, uh, through the community meeting we had, response was um, from my perspective coming from commercial real estate as positive a meeting as I've ever been to. It went, went very well and I think Sanford has shown over the course of their history that they you know, want to and will continue to be um, conscious of the neighbors around us. Uh, we hope to make this a development that Sioux Falls, the state of South Dakota, because it is along the interstate, a project in the surrounding neighborhoods are proud of. Any questions for us at this time? Questions for Kurt. I have one about the um, proposed commercial use that you have to the south. Um, I understand you're going to have thousands of employees out there. So the businesses that you're planning to bring in, would that be just intended for the employees that are in that area, or would you be attracting people from the community? Well, in the commercial, in the area that's to the south, actually, and I believe that it's within our application, the commercial development is, a, is going to be something that, you know, may want to be addressed by uh, the developer that's going to be looking at some of that area. But the idea behind it is, no, to serve not just ours, but also the surrounding area as well. Be something that people out there could utilize. Any other questions for Kurt? Well, Kurt, I understand, or from, from my conversations with you, I'm understanding that it's not going to be, I mean, the park is not going to be gated. It's going to be open to the that's public. Exactly so yep. if there's a restaurant in there that Joe Blow from you know, Absolutely. I mean, Pikes Peak Circle wants to go to, they and can. That was one of the changes that got put into your packet late. We uh, requested um, restaurant, and that was on recommendation of staff, and a very good one, not to, you know, make anybody feel too proud of themselves, but that uh, it was a recommendation they made to have that accessible and open. And uh, if you'd see these parks, actually, in a lot of areas, the office buildings within the parks have those things that are not only just for the food service for the building, but for surrounding neighbors mm -hmm. as well. I noticed you've added to um, instead of just warehouse a retail warehouse. Yes. So idea. I'm sorry. Go ahead. The idea behind that is um, the possibility exists where we would get along with these medical research companies, medical research supply type companies, um, and to go along with that correspondingly, front of house sale would be something that they would obviously want to have along with that, as opposed to load the truck, drive it a half a block, unload the truck. That being the idea is they could do some of that right there in the front of the building. And, and I'm sure you're aware that, and obviously those final development plans would come before us, but the city's going to want those to look compatible to the other office buildings in the park. And so do we. Yeah. yeah the idea behind this, I mean, with the way we're going to develop it, we hope to obviously, with what you see in our original <laughs> layout here, to have a theme that runs through it is consistent and, uh, and you know, I would say uh, complementary to what we want to do with our building. So we're going to make sure that those covenants in there will absolutely work with the city to make sure yeah. that that's acceptable. It's a great plan and it's exciting. Thank you. Exciting project. Any other questions for Kurt? I guess not. Thank you, Kurt. Anyone else in the audience that cares to address item 20? <laughs> Good evening. My name is John Satterholm, and you all know me. I uh, used to work for Sioux Valley for a long time, and uh, now work for the Hart Hospital. 
We, John, what's your address? My address is 1612 North Oakwood Place. Thank Oak you. Ridge Place. Um, we are neighbors uh, to the project on the uh, northeast uh, corner. Uh, and the piece of ground that, uh, that uh, is there belongs to the North Central Heart, which is part of, the, part of uh, our complex. We would welcome Sanford uh, to our campus. Uh, and I have two questions, uh, and maybe they'll be answered in time. But when you talk about a research park, uh, one of the things that happens is that you have uh, research medical waste. And I guess we'd have some questions about how that's going to be dealt with. And number two, in a research park, uh, and I don't know the answer to this because we haven't been part of the, uh, the meetings of the community, uh, that you have animal research. And I guess the qu question would be, if you're going to have animals, how you would take care of the animals, and ultimately how you would dispose of the animals. And so uh, with that, uh, there are just two questions about research that people don't usually think about and uh, have not been answered at this point in time. Right. Yes. Thank you. Any questions for John? Thank you. Is there anyone else that would care to ad uh, address this item tonight? Jeff Sh Schmidt. Jeff Schmidt, planning staff. I just wanted to clarify uh, Lynette's question. In regards to sub area, and sub area B, sub area B transitions to the south into a future sub area that you can see on your exhibit that is from another developer that will come in as another sub area in a different plan development district. That's all going to be C4 is my expectation because that's where the new interchange is going to go. It's going to be the interchange of I-29 and 85th Street. So mm -hmm. they're looking at how they take their C4 from the south to C4 before they get to medical. So that's why it's showing the C4. Uh, Jeff, before you step down, uh, could you real quick like uh, address John's issue as it relates to uh, what we're doing tonight and what will happen in the future for the specific use of some of these buildings? Um, we, Mike Cooper and I have met with um, the Heart Hospital and that question has been raised at this point with the specific questions I'm unable to answer those. Yeah. Um, as they list in sub area A, it's medical research. The specific aspect of medical waste for research and animal research, um, we don't have those defined yet and they're not defined. So. But as each building would be planned and developed in the research park, uh, those specific uses would need to be identified. That's what Mike Cooper and I are. We continue to work as well as with Sanford at, with the adjacent property owners to make sure that we try to address those issues. Okay. But they're not defined yet, so we need to kind of look at those as we move forward. Okay. Yes, sir. Jeff, I know a number of years ago I sat on a very Med exciting subcommittee called Hazardous Waste. Med yeah, the Medical Waste Waste <laughs> Disposal. Yeah. Yes. Yep. And we were looking at all the incinerators and... Yep. Yeah. And I'm sorry that I don't recall every detail of that, but I would guess... Blank it right it, Yeah, I'd try to block some of that out. Um, but I would guess that some of the things are, are covered in that particular ordinance, and then Correct. maybe that's an, an ordinance for expansion, or that an expansion of that ordinance might deal with some of the issues that have been raised here. Possibly. It's the, question, it's the good questions that John's raising right now is in regards to if they're just doing typical medical there, and again... Sanford and this PD doesn't know the entire extent of what they're going to be required to do either. And John is trying to find out those issues also. They're welcoming them to the neighborhood, right. but what's the extent and the specific uses? We need to kind of meld and make neighbors together. And then if city it's health just medical and state waste, health. All the hospitals have medical waste and have to address that. If it's medical research waste that's different and we're going to have to adjust to that. Um, Through those that. ordinances. Correct. And wouldn't that fall under OSHA as well? We'll have to see. Anyway, thank you. That, got it. Okay. Anyone else that cares to address uh, item number 20 tonight? <clears throat> if not, commission action. I'll move for approval of item 20. I second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying yes. 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 Opposed, same sign.
Item number 20 is approved. Item number 21 is a major amendment of sub-area E, Brady Estates Plan Development District, to allow a telecommunications facility with stealth design at 3600 South Southeastern Avenue. Shauna. Thank you. The applicant is proposing a telecommunication tower of stealth design uh, as an allowed use in the Brady Estates Plan Development District. One of your planning commission members said that there was need for cell service out here as he has frequent drop calls. That particular <laughs> member is not here this evening, but he was excited to hear that there may be better cell phone service in this general area. The Brady Estates Plan Development District was created in 1985 for residential and commercial development. The Brady Estates Plan Development District does allow for limited commercial uses. The applicant will be required to provide a final development plan prior to construction. The location of the telecommunication facilities are proposed in the northeast portion of the site adjacent to the parking lot on the east or the back side of the existing building. Physical characteristics of the area include that the site is established and the landscaping is maturing. The telecommunication facility will not be in place in any of the required yards. The flagpole structure will be set back at a distance that is equal or greater than the tower height. A final development plan is required for the tower and changes to the sub area regulations follow your staff report. Because the application provides for stealth design standard and a final development plan is required, staff recommends approval of the major amendment. Any questions from Shauna? Shauna, these flags are supposed to be uh, flying at all times, aren't they, uh, in stealth poles? Uh, the way we uh, condition those on final development plans and also on conditional use permits is that the flag has to be flown to American Legion standards. They are the keeper of the flag. So if it flies at night, it has to be lit. Um, it has to be in good repair. It can't be tattered, that yeah. kind of thing. Any other questions of Shauna? Thank you, Shauna. Mm -hmm. Is the uh, applicant here this evening? Thank you. Uh, my name is Kurt Walter from Rochester, Minnesota. Uh, I do represent Verizon Wireless in their ever-expanding quest to have better coverage. Um, what we're trying to do is, is get better coverage in the area. We looked for existing structures. Um, there was nothing at all in the area. Uh, if you're familiar with this, it's all pretty much residential. Uh, we did approach the park board last year uh, about Paisley Park to the north, installing a similar flagpole there, and they said that uh, the city's not really interested in opening up their parks for this kind of development yet. Uh, this is the most commercial piece of property in the area. We thought it would fit best there to kind of combine our coverage needs with how we fit in the community. So, do you have any questions? Any questions for Kurt? <clears throat> Only thing I would like to say is if you've got a moment afterwards, I have another area that is in desperate need of one of these towers. <laughs> I, I will be available. Okay. <laughs> any other questions for Kurt? Thank you, Kurt. Thank you. Anyone else that would care to address item number 21 this evening? If not, commission action. Uh, Mr. Chair, I would recommend approval of item 21, and I'd also like to commend the petitioner for using that particular design uh, because that really does uh, provide a minimum impact to the neighborhood and still provide uh, some uh, cell coverage, which sounds like is badly needed. So I would recommend approval. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 Opposed, same sign. Item number 21 is approved. <coughs> Item number 22 is the design review in the I-229 design review district for expansion of a parking lot at Lincoln High School at South Cliff Avenue and I-229. Steve. The rezoning uh, for this particular item was on the consent agenda, uh, but uh, the report that is given here for the designer review is a result of 
it not being able to meet the uh, to the letter of the design requirements regulations of the I-229 design review district. And the items where it does not conform to those are indicated in the staff report and is available for you to comment on and review. The applicant has proposed uh, under certain conditions to meet the requirements of the regulations but with a different kind of approach uh, to those, such as the landscaping and the development of parking and so on. And so I'll, I'll try to emphasize those in the report here. But basically, yes, it is an expansion of the high school campus to include uh, athletic field improvements, parking lot improvements, and in the process of doing that, they have to conform to the I-229 Design Review District regulations. Where it does not conform to the letter of the requirements uh, is in parking and loading, where topography will not provide for screening by a fence, wall, or berm. Groupings of conifers should be used to provide year-round screening. Actually, the parking uh, and athletic field improvements are proposed to be partially screened by shade and evergreen tree groupings on site and within the I-229 right-of-way. The applicant has been working with the State Department of Transportation to have access to the uh, highway right-of-way for the use of planting these screening uh, devices and so is proposing to meet the intent of the uh, design review district regulations in that way. The other item is that um, under landscaping, in addition to the requirements of the zoning ordinance, a 25-foot landscaped area with one tree per 40-foot of Interstate 229 frontage shall be provided along the Interstate 229 right-of-way and such trees shall be grouped or regularly spaced along the right-of-way. Uh, the applicant is proposing to construct a portion of the parking lot expansion within the required landscape setback. Again, it goes back to being able to use part of the right-of-way under an agreement with the State Highway Department for the landscaping and therefore uh, actually meeting the intent of the ordinance that uh, provides screening and landscaping along I-229. Because the plan is complete and has been considered by the South Dakota Department of Transportation and uh, they have no concerns with the landscaping within the right-of-way and will issue a permit to occupy the right-of-way that would allow the proposed tree plantings and parking lot, staff is recommending approval of the uh, design review. We've had no calls on this and that concludes staff report. Any questions for Steve? Is that a question? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> All right. Is the petitioner here this evening? Good evening. I'm Monty Miller from Sayre Associates, 216 uh, South Duluth Avenue, and, and I'm here to talk about any questions of the engineering design. And Jeff Kreider from the Operational uh, Services from the School District is also here as well. I think Steve did a pretty good job of explaining uh, the challenges that we've had on the project between the DOT and the school district and the city requirements, and we've tried to work with staff to, to make these things work. So I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Any questions for Monty? I guess not, Monty. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else in the audience tonight that would care to address item number 22? If not, commission action. I move for approval of item 22. A second. We have a motion and a second. Further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of uh, the motion signify by saying yes. Yes. The motion passes. Okay, item number 23 is a preliminary subdivision plan for Sanford Research Park addition and a plan development of office and institutional uses at West 69th Street and South Tallgrass Avenue. Steve. This uh, preliminary subdivision plan, again, was part of the requirements for the rezoning request uh, and their plan development, initial development plan. Uh, the subdivision plan has been reviewed uh, to conform to the sub-area, or excuse me, the subdivision ordinance requirements of lot, block, and street layout. Uh, also, all of the conventions of uh, 
the sub subdivision ordinance for engineering review. It is currently being reviewed by engineering, uh, but on a preliminary basis, we feel that it is compatible with the area because of the points of access and internal circulation has been laid out. We do have a checklist, uh, a tentative checklist back from engineers now at the present time, and I can try to answer any questions. The applicant may also be able to do that. Basically, the concerns from engineering have to do with right-of-way, uh, access points, uh, drainage, uh, utilities, some very technical type things that uh, really wouldn't affect the lot block and street layout as you are reviewing it this evening. So staff is recommending approval as it conforms to the initial development plan of the rezoning and uh, the requirements of the subdivision regulations. We've had no calls on this, and that concludes staff report. Thank you, Steve. Any questions for Steve this evening? Thank you, Steve. <laughs> Is the applicant uh, here this evening? Kurt Bross, Director of Development of Sanford Health uh, Medical Research Park, 1305 West 18th. Steve covered it pretty well, and nothing's really changed in the last 10 minutes, so any questions? Okay. Any questions for Kurt regarding this preliminary subdivision plan? Thank you, Kurt. Is there anyone else here this evening that would care to address item number 23? Okay. Seeing none, commission action on item 23? Mr. Chair, I would vote, uh, move for approval on item number 23. I will second. We have a motion and a second. Is there further commission discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 Opposed, same sign. Item number uh, 23 is approved. Item number 24 is adjournment. Is there a motion to adjourn? So I, <laughs> I second. There's lots of motions and a couple seconds. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 Thank you. Hey, I didn't yes. read the regular agenda. It's a little bit late, though. <laughs>